Hi, and thank you for joining today's demo and showcasing the Fishbowl integration with our Starship application. We're going to focus on an international shipment going to Canada and different documentation that Starship has the capabilities of printing so that way you can streamline your international processing going forward. So to get started in Fishbowl, um, as we pick and pack our items uh, in the Fishbowl application, we will create a shipment document. And in the shipment document, we'll basi basically be moving over all of your line items from Fishbowl and the carton that you've packed those items in. So in this example that I'm gonna be using today, I have my um, comfort bike uh, packed into my one carton. That one carton also has its dimensions of eight by eight by six that will also bring into the Starship application. Um, all the description, quantity, the values and weights will also be brought into Starship. So therefore Starship can uh, compile your commercial documentation needed for the international shipment. We'll also map in your ship to information as well as your carrier and service that the shipment will be uh, using in that particular instance. As I bring in Starship here, <clears throat> so Starship is a web browser application. Um, it is a, a login that you would log into, and therefore you would come into your homepage with all of your shipments for that particular day, um, or based on the filters that you may have filtered uh, off of. Uh, in this case, I'm just looking at, um, you know, basically looking for my customer name called Allen's Raceway, uh, and it would show all of my orders for Allen's Raceway. So you can do a couple different things here um, to bring in the uh, order information from Fishbowl. Um, you can use a wedge type scanner to scan in a, a pick ticket or pack list if it was barcoded uh, into this field here. Uh, you can also use our shortcut, this little truck icon here, and click this and bring in the whole entire shipment into Starship. So all of that information will import. Um, so up in the upper left, we'll show the shipment ID number that we were working with is 50070. The apply charges for the FedEx shipment uh, that will be applicable. Um, and then also the ship to that was uh, set inside a fishbowl will also be pre-populated here. We also have the capabilities of doing third-party shipping. Um, so we would just basically have the customer assign a specific field with the appropriate account number to map that in. So therefore the user doesn't have to manually select anything inside the Starship uh, platform. The sender will basically be defaulted to you or again, a bill to section inside a fishbowl uh, that we can uh, mark the ship from address uh, into Starship properly, and then as well as the recipient, which is also mapped over the ship to information um, correctly as well. Note, we don't um, bring in any address validation for international orders. That's only applicable on domestic orders um, only. Um, down below, you'll see the packaging was brought in just as you had in Fishbowl. So if I drill into the packaging view, you'll notice I have my one carton uh, with my comfort bike listed underneath it. Again, if I had multiple items on the particular order or the shipment, those would all be listed down below. Uh, but because I have one item um, and quantity one that was also brought in as one, um, the weight of the item, um, which is totaling the box weight of 20 pounds, and then those dimensions I mentioned before as well that are um, making up the box dimensions. Um, going into the line item view here, you'll notice uh, we bring in some specific information um, for the line item itself, you know, for the value for commercial invoice purposes, the weight um, as well. And then also in here, we have some standard mappings we do from Fishbowl with the item number, the description, the values. And then on the international tab, we also have the abilities of storing Schedule B and NAFTA information for Canadian shipments. Um, specifically, so therefore the user doesn't have to uh, redundantly input this information every single time they're trying to make an international shipment. <clears throat> if this was EEI related or ACE integration required, um, we would also uh, be <clears throat> uh, providing a way to directly uh, bring in the information into the ACE website so you can have the, pop, uh, the ITN populate uh, for you automatically inside of Starship so the user, again, doesn't have to enter the information twice. But because this is a Canadian shipment, we're exempt from filing any ITNs um, and also the value being below $2,500, we don't have to worry about filing an ITN for the shipment. Uh, so we can move on to showing where the rate shop and the total charges would apply. 
So as you see here, the total charges, you have your published rates, your contracted rates, which would be your negotiated rates with the carrier, and then the applied rate, which would be either you're just a negotiated rate or maybe a freight rule, uh, which is maybe an additional handling, a percentage or a flat rate uh, that you want to be brought back into Fishbowl. Um, so again, Starship has the capabilities of automating that process. Um, and again, we can work with your team uh, on establishing those different freight rules that could be applicable. Down below is where you can have the ability of seeing all of your carriers on your license um, with the rates that you've negotiated. So if you wanted to see those rates, you would simply click shop all and you can see all the available carriers on your license and what those negotiated rates are to make a determination of the best option. If I want to see all, I can set my filter to all and hit contract charges to list lowest to highest. And you'll notice here my FedEx ground rate is actually coming in least expensive, so I know I'm in good shape. However, if I did want to make a determination of using a different carrier, I can always use and click the box next to that specific service I want to use for that shipment. To move forward, you can either hit F3 or the icon down here below. <clears throat> this will go out to FedEx, letting them know there's one package to be shipped, and then the documentation will start the process uh, following the label printing. Um, so here you'll see some um, different um, documents printing here. So first will be the commercial invoice. Um, so again, FedEx and UPS and DHL all support electronic documentation. Um, so we have that capability built into Starship so you don't have to print documents. <clears throat> However, if you do print documents, this is what they would look like uh, with your commercial invoice printing first um, with the Schedule B, uh, the country of origin, as well as the unit value for customs purposes. Um, then you would also have your certificate of origin for NAFTA purposes <clears throat> with all the appropriate information that was saved. Um, and then last but not least, you would have your label being printed um, for the shipment along with a packing list. If you prefer to have the packing list print in Starship, you can do that with the label. We call this document our smart label, which is basically one half a packing list. One half is the label you would tear off and put onto the box itself. You also can print a label to a thermal and also have the packing list print to a thermal or have the packing list print to a laser printer if you choose to do that as well. When I come back into Fishbowl to show the right back, I simply refresh my order. <clears throat> and you'll notice here that my carton has a tracking number listed in real time. And if I also click on that carton here, the tracking number is put on the tracking field down below, along with that freight cost of $46.84 that you saw a moment ago. So this concludes our workflow for international processing with Fishbowl. I hope you enjoyed the demo, and we look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care.